Hello, I'm Drew, Application Engineer with SKF. Welcome to the Baker AWA PowerPack Overview. We'll begin by talking about powering up the host unit in the PowerPack. The PowerPack has a, a power cable specifically designed to connect to the AWA. To power the PowerPack, we have to plug the uh, PowerPack into an AC power supply here and that will allow us to turn the unit on and off with the, with the power switch. In addition to power, the power pack also requires communication with the host unit, and for that we have a special communications cable. It's labeled host in power pack and is directional, so make sure you hook it up in the appropriate orientation. When conducting testing, we have a push to test button to initiate the test. We have an e-stop switch that will secure power to the high voltage leads. That's a push to engage and a twist to reset. Uh, we have a function uh, selector switch that has a surge position and three high pot um, current scale positions. Uh, we have the voltage control knob which is, uh, allows you to manually adjust voltage during uh, power pack testing. And we have a leads energized light on either side of the tester, which will illuminate when high voltage testing is being performed. Uh, on the faceplate of the unit, below the handle, we have the test selector switch. Um, it has four or five positions, a high pot for DC high pot testing, uh, leads grounded position, a position one, two, and three that are used during surge tests. Uh, to put the surge down the appropriate lead. The side here is where the test, the high voltage test leads from the power pack come out of the bottom of the unit. And we have uh, three, the three test leads, one, two, and three. Uh, the ground lead, which would be connected to the motor or circuit under test. And then we have an additional ground lead, which has a, a braided sheath on it that's connected to earth ground for safety. Those can be stowed on the back posts here, these two posts. All right, now we'll demonstrate how to test a motor with the power pack in, in the manual mode, which will be very similar to the automatic operation of the tester as well. All right, so the first thing we want to do is select the high pot setup screen. And on the high pot setup screen in the high pot column there, we want to select the enable power pack checkbox. Uh, once that's checked, we need to select the appropriate test voltage, and you can just ramp uh, that voltage up to your desired test voltage. Okay, and then when you're ready to uh, initiate the test, you can hit run, run test, and then you have an on-screen uh, set of instructions. Uh, that number one says disconnect the analyzer leads and place them on top of the unit. So that's the the normal AWA leads. We don't when we're using the power pack, we don't use these leads. Put them up on the tester so we don't get confused about which we're connecting. Step two, connect power pack leads to the load on the test. So the power pack leads that I showed you earlier that come out of the bottom of the unit will connect that to our load, uh, to our motor, or our circuit. Um, and then step three, move the power pack function knob to the proper position for this test. So since we're doing a high pot test, we have three positions for high pot, uh, the 10 microamp setting, per division setting, 10 and one. And we always start on the highest, on the 100 microamp per division setting. Step four, if present, move the test lead selector switch to the proper position for this test. So we let down here on the lead selector switch, which should normally be placed in the lead's ground position, we'll turn that um, counterclockwise to the high pot position. And now we're ready to initiate the test. We'll click continue. And now the tester informs us to start the testing. We press the power pack test button. We can press that there, or we could also use uh, the foot switch that connects to the back of the tester. Okay, now I want to make sure that my voltage control knob is turned all the way counterclockwise down to zero or the test won't initiate properly. So we'll push the test. Um, and then the test will initiate. And we're looking at the screen here. We're going to watch voltage and current here on these two bar graphs. We'll see the, the flashing test indicator lights illuminate. Now I'll begin to increase my test voltage with the voltage control knob being mindful of my charging current in the, on the right bar graph. I don't want that to exceed the, the trip 
you know, the faster you ramp, the higher that current will be. So be sure to be mindful of that current. Once your test voltage is achieved, the timer will begin. And you'll see the countdown timer begin. And if your current is less than half of the lowest increment, we'll, we'll take the microamp per division setting and we'll reduce it to the next scale. And you'll see the scale change here. Again, if our current as it is now below the half of the lowest division, we'll take it to the final and lowest one microamp per division setting. And this will ensure we have the most accurate current reading uh, for our measurement. You wanna make sure you, you get there expeditiously because we wanna make sure we get there before our timer runs out. You have to continue to hold the push to test button for this entire test. All right, and once the timer runs out, we'll release the push to test button and you'll see that it says here, waiting for the voltage on the leads to discharge um, before continuing. And what we wanna do is take our test lead selector switch from the high pot position to the leads ground position and that'll ensure a grounding path uh, for our test circuit. And then we should wait as long as we have the test voltage applied for the circuit to completely discharge. Okay. All right. Okay, now we're gonna demonstrate the use of uh, the power pack to surge test um, a, a motor winding. Uh, the first thing we wanna do is ensure our function selector switch is in the surge test position at 12 o'clock. Once that's been uh, verified, we're gonna go into the software uh, setup screen for surge testing and, and, and check the enable power pack uh, check, check box. Okay. Uh, make sure your test voltage is set appropriately, what you want. And when you're ready to initiate the test, we're gonna hit the lead one, um, lead one button. And it's gonna direct us now to move the test lead selector switch to the lead one position. So the test lead selector switch, which should again be in the leads grounded position from our last test, will be rotated to the, uh, clockwise to the position one. Now we're ready to initiate our test. We're gonna push the, uh, push the test button, or again, you can use the foot switch that connects up under the back. Oh, I gotta hit okay first. Okay, and now we push the test button to initiate the test. Now remember that the, the, the voltage control knob has to be all the way counterclockwise in the zero uh, volts position, otherwise it won't initiate the test. It says to start a test, please turn the output control knob to the minimum position. So it's reminding us to do that. Once we're at the minimum position, now we can increase the voltage and it'll auto scale the microseconds per division. And we wanna increase the voltage slowly until we achieve the appropriate test voltage. Okay, now that we're completed with the test, we'll just hit close. And then we want to make sure we hit the save results button to save the test.